episode 83 of the black and fashion podcast thank you guys so much for joining me and being on the wagon of this black fashion movement that will continue to go today i am joined by ronaldo nehemiah of the nehemiah group agency thank you so much for joining me today thank you thank you for having me of course, of course. So I like to just do a little icebreaker before I jump right in. It's called This or That. So I'm just going to ask you what you prefer over the other, and you just you only can pick one, okay? All right. All right. So are you a motorcycle uh, coat guy or a trench coat guy? I'm going to say a, a trench coat guy. Gotcha. Are you a fedora guy or a, a baseball cap guy? I said baseball cap. All right. Nike or Adidas? Nike. Nike. V next or crew next? Crew. Crew. Cool. <laughs> It's always interesting to see what people like over the other. So I'm just going to hop right in and just kind of find out a little bit about your background, where you're from, and a little bit about like your career journey. Um, I know that you're an art curator, a uh, visionary, and I just want to hear a little bit more about like some of your background and your inspiration. All right, all right. So you just want me, okay. so you just want me to go into it? Yeah, go right into it. We want to know about you. We want to know how you got started. But we want to know where you're from, you know, what you went to school for. Did you go to school? And we can start from there. Uh, All right. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida. Um, A part of Miami, Florida called Carroll City. Um, More, you know, I guess more known when Rick Ross started talking about it. But it's a very, one of the most, very areas of, you know, not a lot of young black men come out of it. Um, I'm a very prime um, specimen of my area. Um, I was an All-American football player. Um, I was an All-American track track and field person, real guy. Um, I was a, so basically I was an athlete, majority of all of my adult life um, that a lot of people don't know because of my whole life of my adult life was transcended into the uh, entertainment business of being a wardrobe stylist um i played football in college um which i ran track there as well but my degree was in english um so i got a degree in liberal arts english and you know styling or being in fashion or art was not my um my focus of life that was not something i was exposed to i you know as i I guess what they say, gain a little bit of success and, and being more cultured and start to see the world more and being around more successful uh, Black African-Americans, I was starting to be influenced of things that I should do with my life outside of being an athlete. And um, I could say that, um, you know, at first I wanted to be an a and in the entertainment business or a manager because I was around like my godfather, um, and mentors like John Monopoly that managed Kanye West and, and Datu Faison and, you know, Shaka Zulu and Jeff, uh, Jeff Dixon and, um, you know, Kenny Burns and a lot of guys like Emory Jones and Biggs that has influenced my career and my life in a very direct way that led me, you know, to being, I guess, a wardrobe stylist instead of being a, a manager or an A&R, which, you know, I taught myself the whole business. I didn't know what a wardrobe stylist was. Mm-hmm. Um, and from my background of being raised in the streets and having uncles and stuff as drug dealers and all of this stuff, the money that was presented to me as being a wardrobe stylist was like me being in the streets and selling drugs. So was I related? Like I could get paid thousands of dollars just going to the mall to pick out some clothes. I was like, well, fuck it. You know, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. So I literally stopped my athletic being, you know, me being an athlete my senior year of college. Mm-hmm. I walked away from playing football and I was a starting wide receiver and I walked away from track and field um, because honestly, my body was tired. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just always felt that I had more to give than just being an athlete. So, 
you know, I taught myself the whole business of being a wardrobe stylist, started doing my research of black men that are men that's our wardrobe stylists. And I saw that it was very, it was none. Um, when I was coming up, you mm-hmm. had Ruby Lou and Mike B that, you know, work with Biggie and Puff. So those was my aspirations of guys that I wanted to, you know, be. And, you know, 15, almost 15, 20 years later, I'm still here doing it and known for it. Um, and so it's like, it's a blessing that I'm able to have done some incredible things of a guy being from the South and, you know, being an athlete and then has transcended that my work is seen around the world. So, you know, that's all of that in a nutshell, I gotcha. guess. Gotcha. Would you say that it's easier to style men or to style women? Um, it just, and to be honest with you, it all depends on my mood. Uh-huh. Um, okay. I, I would say, you know, I taught myself how to style women. I, you know, styling women is more creatively easier because you could do so many things, but I don't like styling women because it's too many variables depending on your mood. It depends on how she's feeling that day. It depends on, you know, I could use an example. If I'm doing a three look photo shoot with a guy Mm -hmm. that literally could take two hours. If we inside a studio doing the same exact thing with a woman, would take eight hours you got that right <laughs> so, and it only takes me five or ten minutes to get a person dressed so i just decided to do more of just styling men because as i got older I, I care about my time and i like to be more productive in my day to doing more things and just being stuck at one place I like so that. you know Okay, that's really decent. So um, I just have a segment um, in this show where I like to talk about um, basically a, it was a success or it's a disaster. (laughs) Um, And this segment is actually brought to you by the Assembly Line. The Assembly Line is a full service fashion consulting firm that focuses on cultivating and developing emerging talent by providing resources and guidance on all fronts. They provide various services, including project management, brand building, creative services, product development, and all around consulting to build new brands and elevate established fashion businesses. Their mission is to empower entrepreneurs at any stage of their business and is here to help you build your brand from concept to consumer. Everything in between they are also based in atlanta with you so can you tell me about a time in your career where it made you a better entrepreneur so it was something that went so to shit like it was so bad that you maybe you developed a new practice or you decided to change up the way you did business um do you have any stories like that definitely i have a lot of them <laughs> well, um pick uh, one <laughs> Yeah, it, it just, but it, I could just say the whole common denominator for dealing with, well, understanding of like dealing with African Americans and, and something that we don't really focus on is a great business acronym. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just because we are friends when it comes to business, that doesn't mean that you need to ask me for a discount and then you delay on me paying me. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just a very stern person of this is business. And I'm a professional. This is why you ask me to do what you're calling me to do. Gotcha. If that makes sense, what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. if I'm calling, if you're calling me to do something for my profession, we're going to treat this as a business and I'm going to be paid my fee because you want me to do what I'm great at. Right. And so within that, you just have to draw that fine line. Like, listen, we just dealing with this with business. So let's just, let's just, you know, pay this invoice on time. And just because I'm your friend, that doesn't mean that you got to delay it because you're not going to do this here with Georgia Power or any person else that you got to pay your bills with. Facts. Do you feel like, let's dive into that a little bit. Do you feel like that when you work with friends or family, like that outside of them asking for a discount, do you find that they get, I want to say, I want to say maybe turned off? Like they get upset when you are in a business mode with them? I feel like I've dealt with that on my own, like being an entrepreneur and like when I, you know, help people and I do my services, so if they ask me questions, like I'm always direct them to the website or to book an appointment because my job is to consult. So if I'm consulting, you asking me a whole bunch of questions, then you need to book an appointment. And they usually like, really? And I'm just like, yeah, you do. <laughs> and then it yeah, may, um, you know, it might deter them. They don't want to talk no more. They get irritated. And I'm just like, what you mad for? <laughs> Well, I mean, honestly, that's their personal issue. 
Um, I said I draw the line in the concrete. Mm. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, my friends know if you talk to me about business, that's all we talking about. And if and, and like I said, there's no love loss. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's like when you go into a store, you're not asking for a discount. You paying exactly what he's asking for, and your etiquette is of you is gonna walk back out that door. Mm-hmm. So that's how I treat it. Um, I, and I don't do business with, if you're my real close friend, I'm not doing business with you. Yeah. And if you're my family, I'm not doing business with you because you're not, you're not going to understand the scale of like, I'm not playing with you. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like, let's just, did that. let's just keep it as family and friends. And that's what it is, what it is. Have you ever had to work with any family and friends? Like maybe you tried to employ them? Um, yeah, but then after a while, I don't employ them. I say, I'm going to just keep you on the outside. I give you opportunity, but you, I'll put you in a position to go work for somebody else, but not for me. Gotcha. <laughs> I know what you mean by that, for sure. So tell so, me this. When it comes to styling and wardrobe styling, do you find it hard to, uh, like, keep, like, some of your clients or in black designers? Like, is it sometimes a struggle? Do you feel like that it's easier to find now and did you maybe have more of a harder time with it like you know a couple of years back because I feel like now it is a lot and then we had that you know a little time where there were a lot of urban brands like early 90s early 2000s but then like it went away and then people got back into the luxury brands like how has that I guess like that curve been for you as far as like trying to you know work with black designers well I mean when I started back in 2005 yeah, 2004, 2005. Um, it's not even it's not even about searching for. I think more people being adamant. Well, not even adamant. It's a trendy thing, and I'm gonna explain this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a trendy thing that people want to do. Wear black designers now is because of the whole movement of supporting black businesses, even though these black businesses probably have always been around. Mm-hmm. Um, and back in the in the times when I started. No, you didn't see a lot of black designers at all or having black brands because the access to information of starting your brand wasn't around. Mm-hmm. And then people also too got to understand that this is as well. Having a full running brand is not just having t-shirts and a hat. Oh yeah. Full, full brands are consistently work off for seasons and turnover of forecasting what is going on the season before. And it takes a lot of money. Yeah, for sure. And that's why Kanye West tells people all the time he lost millions trying to fund his own brand. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yes, now it's very easy because everybody's a designer. Everybody has Instagram, everything. People are just more accessible Mm -hmm. to everything. So, yes, it's a lot easier now. But back in the day, we wasn't even focusing on black brands because at the end of the day, when you looked at Sean John um, and all of this stuff, uh, Vocal and all of this, you might have maybe two or three black guys in there, but they wasn't, the whole brand wasn't full of black designers. Right, definitely. And then these black brands was not just owned by the celebrity. It was owned by a group right. that which, which, which was not black. Yeah, I know a lot of them were owned, like by G3, by J Brands, by Jones Group. Um, a right. lot of them. I worked in the industry for a, a very long time before I started my business, and we had a lot of different brands under our umbrellas. I worked for G3, and we had a lot. We even had the Calvin Klein license. You know, we made Calvin Klein, right. we made Carl Lagerfeld, we made a lot of different things. So, I guess right. that. I think there's a misconception there where people think that the everything is super duper black owned, but it's only I would say a certain portion of it that actually is. And I definitely agree right. with you on the whole branding thing. Um, just a little bit about me: I own an apparel consulting company, um, and I help designers create their clothing brands. I do product product development and manufacturing. I do everything right here in uh, in Brooklyn, and I have so many designers that I've worked with. Like over the past year, I've worked with over three hundred inspire. I'm gonna call them inspiring designers that you know they want to create clothing lines because I think like you said it is definitely a trend right now because I always have had this business I've always done product development I've always done manufacturing within the last year this business went from it being just me to now me having 12 employees in a commercial space and we make it so much product because we just got a wind of people that wanted to start clothing brands and a lot of these people that I'm working with like I and now, me being a year in, I'm a lot more selective. 
with my clientele because I did come around a lot of bullshit and be honest. Like people hitting me up right. because they want to make, you know, uh, track suits and they want to make t-shirts and a whole bunch of bullshit. And I'm a designer. Like I'm a designer at right. heart. That's what my passion is. That's my, what my degree is. In. And I was always just like, I don't want to make this stuff. But at the time I couldn't, I wasn't saying no to anyone. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll create everything for you. But then I find that those are the ones that don't listen to me on the education side. I offer uh, courses and mentorships and training and stuff like that. And they just always want me to create the product opposed to the branding that goes behind it, the marketing, the advertising, like the making sure you have your target consumer nailed down. And it's so interesting to me that how trendy it is to be a designer right now. And I'm in a position to make these things for these people. And I'm in a space now where I'm just like, I'm not making that. Like I'm doing an assessment yeah. now because I'm over it. And it's like attached to my company and my brand that we just giving like giving out clothes like here like these designs that I've been seeing lately I'm just be like that's not it like I've seen this a hundred times so now we screen them like what's what first of all what price point you want to be in because people think they're going to start something and they're going to be able to charge 40 50 dollars for something I'm like you work with us you got to start in the luxury market because we're making everything in New York we don't make anything in China so if you do it a whole size run it's going to cost a little pretty penny honey you got to have some money to do it you know and then they'll right. go all the way through the sample making stage, get to production. And I hit them with an invoice like, well, to produce everything, it's going to be fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And then they don't want to do it no more. And I'm just like, you should, I've been saying this from the beginning. So it's very interesting to see someone else like really say it because I'm just like, it's so trendy right now, but yeah. it's kind of good for me because I, I have a good business, but I just want the people that are more, you know, passionate about it. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard about people understanding. And that's what I get into saying People wanted to be in want to be in the business, but don't want to do the business work. Yeah, yeah you know. True. So, and everything with us as our uh, black people is is very trendy things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We want the fast, instant gratification of something, but don't want to do the research and understanding. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like they don't know about doing tech packs. They don't know about all of this stuff that goes into the, uh, having a brand. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 uh, again. We, you know, it's sad to say, but we just do a lot of trendy things and just. Oh, shouldn't. I've noticed. I've noticed a lot of those people come in and come right back down. Right. But I can tell now, um, from the get go, now I can actually tell what designers are gonna make it and which ones are not. <laughs> right. I, I, right. <laughs> like, because it's the ones that you know invest in and really have an innovation versus the ones that honestly don't. You know. Right. And it's very right. interesting. So uh, yeah. what was your, I guess, within the last five, I want to say, because you probably have a lot, but I'm going to say within the last maybe two to three years, what was your favorite project that you worked on? Um, oh, God. Um, I'm in there. Okay, let's say year. Cause I'm like, I'm pretty sure you do so much stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Within the last uh, year, what was your favorite project that you worked on? Year. I would say year. Uh, because last year we was kind of in COVID, so I was actually resting a little bit. Um, 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 yeah, it's kind of. Let, let's just say just randomly. Um, the whole process of like working with my brother, like Trinidad James, mm -hmm. um, you know, that led us to you know works being in GQ magazine and starting this thing of when GQ magazine started showcasing rappers. And in GQ magazine, they never did that before, and I really could say that Trinidad was one of the first artists as, on the rap side that was featured in GQ magazine, you know? Um, and that just was dope because you don't see young guys from the South in GQ magazine. And then also, you know, I was blessed by Melinda Weeks at the time that was the editor at GQ to allow me to style that spread because they only use their in-house stylists. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So from me being a guy from the South, I could say I might be the only man that has ever styled a spread out of GQ magazine that's from the South that did not work for GQ. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? And this is when magazines was heavily in stores. Um, and I would say, like, I mean, it's just so many that I'm being blessed to be around. Hmm. But I think that one stands out the most because you would never expect two young black men that's a rapper and a man that's in fashion from the South that lives in the South to be featured work around the world in GQ magazine. Oh, that's quite the accomplishment. That's what's up. Right. That is what's up. 
So um, as we move into the second segment of the show, um, this segment is brought to you by J&J Legal. They help fashion designers and entrepreneurs build their brands, protect their creativity, and secure their legacy. They offer legal services and trademarks, copyrights, and business formation and contract drafting. You can book a free 15-minute discovery call with them today to get your fashion empire on the right track sooner rather than later. Definitely visit www.jnjlegalservices.com and follow J&J Legal on Instagram. Now, I want to talk about, um, I guess, education. So from a wardrobe styling point of view and just like from your experience, do you feel like it's better for you to just kind of hop out there and put yourself out there and network and bump shoulders with the right people? Or do you feel like uh, school is necessary? Because I know there are a couple of stylists that have created like fashion styling academies, like Misa Hilton has one. And then I've seen like these fashion styling programs like coming through via Instagram and stuff like that. Do you feel like education is really valuable or are you just gonna have to just go throw yourself out there? Um, That's where it gets tricky because I'm not the best example to say that because I tell people all the time I got struck by lightning. Mm -hmm. You know, I came from a whole nother world and just taught myself the business by trial and error because I'm a business sound person. Mm -hmm. And I think that people really need both understanding of it. You know what I'm saying? Because it just all depends on what you want your, your part of the fashion business business in. Like I'm a wardrobe stylist. I'm a creative. I could tell you what I think in my mind as a designer, I guess, but I really don't want to sew. Mm. It takes too much time. You get what I'm saying? I really don't want to sit and deal with, you know, micro, you know, just like with sketching and all of that stuff. I can sketch something real fast and give it to somebody that they love to do that mm -hmm. and went to school for that because that's what they're great at. And allow them to do it. It's like I have an athlete. I have, since I was an athlete, I have just an athletic mentality. Right. It's like me being a wide receiver. I don't want to be the quarterback because I just need to do my part. Right. I'm faster than the quarterback. So if I got somebody that could do that and focus in on that and let me do this other part, but we both have the common denominator, then I allow that person to do that. But that's so, more so like with design. I mean, like you know that there are styling programs. Like, that's if somebody went to school for design. They learned how to sew and sketch and stuff like that. But they right. have legit, like, fashion styling programs, but they don't do any that's, of that. Oh, so, so that's another thing, too. So what Misa is doing is in, is great. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right? Because she's an OG, and so she could tell her trials and tribulations and her accolades. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But me personally, I don't think there... There is not, that's not a, it's, it's something that is in you. I think so too. When, when it comes to styling, you, like I feel like design, you got to go to school because you, you got to learn how to right, sew. You got to go to school for it. Right. right. It's styling? like some barbers, yeah. right. I have met some barbers that never stepped foot in a barber school that could cut better than a barber that went to school. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's, it's in you. That That's something like people be like, so how do you pick clothes out for people that don't look like you or dress like you. We don't even know. I couldn't tell you. It's just naturally something that is in my mind. Mm -hmm. So, but what I could teach you is the business side about it to make sure that your business ran straight, but I can't teach you how to be a stylist. Right. Because that's, that's something that is innately in my mind. Like a lot of producers didn't go to school to be a producer. Right. It's just like I have met people that are musicians that don't know how to read music. But if they listen to songs, they can play any song known to man. True. So it's like, you know, you know, having conversation about your career or to make the, the do's and don'ts of being a stylist, I think, yes, that information should be passed on. Right. But me trying to teach you how to be a stylist, I can't teach you. Nobody taught me. You have to just. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, you just figure it out. You just, but the business acronym about it, yes, because you have a lot of people getting the business fucked up about being a stylist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people all the time, how are you a stylist? And all you post pictures of yourself dressed up. <laughs> I see. Because that. that's what, because <laughs> that, that's what, I mean, 75, 80% of these fashionistas and all of this stuff is people that just dressing themselves. Mm -hmm. 
but you don't have no relationships with brands, designers. You have never been a magic. You've never been a none of this stuff. You're picking up everything as a profession as you are trendy by a hashtag on social media. Yeah, a fashion. I call them fashion enthusiasts. <laughs> uh, however you want to, and, and this is the thing. I'm such from the OG side about it mm -hmm. that I don't even pay attention to it because when I'm on these jobs and the award shows and all of this stuff, I don't see none of these Instagram stylists around me. Mm -hmm. True. I don't see none of their work. They post more about them outfits or themselves than what the work that they're doing. And again, if that helps them in this new age, if that helps you get clients to style them, mm. but then you can't keep clients or your name doesn't ring a bell when they come into your city, I don't know what to tell you. Wow. Yeah, that's true. And then, and then also what this young generation needs to stop doing is too, you provide a service. You're not the star. And so I have come on video shoots with young wardrobe stylists and they come on the set with a camera crew and all of this, like they the celebrity. And you're providing the service. So it's like, so you want to be famous. You don't want to have a legacy. And that's the difference. Yeah, that's and the OG stylists, you know, don't respect that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. At the end of the day, you never saw June. You never saw Misa. You know what I'm saying? Until they had to do an interview and describing what their, what their, their vision was. Mm -hmm. Groovy Lou really don't even be on Instagram. Yeah, I know. And he's style, <laughs> and he's the OG. Mike B, like you get what I'm saying. Like these guys that are OG, the reason I they respect me because I come from that last era of respecting the business and just doing your job and being great at it. Okay. Makes sense. We we let the work speak for itself. We're not trying to be on Instagram trying to be cute and all of this stuff with an outfit. Right, you're the background. I mean, like you'd like to play the background. Like, and that's, right. and that's your level. That's, that's where you want you, to be at. Right. You're too busy putting outfits on yourself. So what are you providing to your clients? True. Would you say that it's difficult to uh, gain relationships, like, with retailers and stuff like that? Like, how do you get them to No, trust? it's not. It's, it's hard. It's not at all. Okay. It's not hard because I really do this business. I'm really, I really do the business of being a wardrobe stylist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, my, and the way I am as a man... I just handle my business in a, in a, in a way that from the way I am as a man transient. So I handle my business with people. Mm -hmm. And then 90% of the time, if I'm in a store anyway, spend a lot of money over and over again, they don't even know I'm a stylist until somebody might tell them who I am. And then it just, as at the end of the day, I respect the store and the brand just as well as I respect my business. And all it is, is if you say you're going to do something, do it or communicate it why it didn't get done. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these young stylists say that they're doing something, messing the clothes up on Instagram, doing everything that they're not supposed to be doing and disrespecting the business acronym. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Would you say that it's also, like, I guess with stylists, this, well, I'm pretty sure you are, like, that it is levels to it? Because I know yeah, there are is. some people it's that, yeah, you know, it's they only work in TV or they only work with, you know, certain, like, entertainment events, but then you have other stylists that work with people. I was going to ask this question because I'm more so thinking about budgets and how I feel like I always hear stylists saying, or maybe it's just new, I've had interviews with both, like, people who are a little bit more ahead and then people that are, I guess, for me, I will say just starting out. And the ones that are just starting out always have an issue with with budgets but then I had well, interviewed a stylist named Ty Turner she'd been working for BET and for VH1 for a long time and she said that they still have budgets like issues with like Wild and Now and different like uh, shows right. and stuff like that and I'm just like how does that work like if, well, if you because, don't have a budget then you can't you can't be you need to dress well, just, yourself <laughs> right it's a difference when a network is paying you then a, a person an individual is paying you do you give a, do that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, because a network might give you a certain budget versus like a, a celebrity giving you a, a budget. Well, a, a celebrity want the cheapest shit but want the most expensive shit. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. A network is like you're getting money from a bank. They just going to fund whatever they feel like whoever's in charge is going to say what they need. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So it's, a, it's, like, it's always of like spending your own money is different when you're spending somebody else's money. Gotcha. So when you're spending somebody else's money and you're playing with the house money, 
you you're not you're like whatever. Let's just get the job done. Let's make it the flies. But if it's but if it's if it's your money, you're like well, sh- let's just get the most important things. We're not gonna get all the op. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes complete sense. So my last segment before I get you out of here is called It's a Muse. <laughs> Um, and it's a muse is actually brought to you by the Brownstone Experience. It's a wellness and fashion and beauty experience inside of the black women community. They are currently sourcing black owned designers to add to their monthly collections. They are open to building creative partnership with black owned products and brands. They understand the old retail model does not work for both parties and they are ready to create a new and innovative approach to meet their clients expectations. So it's a muse is just anything that you do or have, it can be tangible, that inspires you, that you want to share with someone else, whether it be a quote, a mantra, an affirmation, a book, um, a prayer. Is there anything that you'd like to share that, you know, just keeps you going when it comes to like your entrepreneurship journey? Understand that the, the that is bigger than you. What you're doing in life could influence to take care of your family. It could leave a legacy for your children. And it can, it, or it will stand the test of time. So just understanding that it's bigger than you. Understanding that's a good, that's a good mantra. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. I like that. Well, thank you so much, Ronaldo. I appreciate you taking your time to speak with me today, and I appreciate no all your feedback and all your expertise and advice, and for sharing your story with us. Yeah, no problem. I'm in, and I wish much success to you and your <laughs> and your company and your and your in your podcast and Thank you know you. when 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 the shit gets tough that means it's making you stronger you absolutely so. right i'm in that um i'm in that growing pains place now because it's, it's been very fast for me like within the past year and all these people with these clothing lines and just growing this team and employing people it's just it's a different beast for me but i'm, I'm trying to you know i'm taking it one day at a time and as i like your mantra because that's how i think and i'm just like it's more than it's not about me no more you're not a one woman show no more all these other people's livelihoods depends on the success of this business, you know. So that's how I keep going too. All right. Well, listen, my success, man, and anything I could do to help you out or support you, just hit me and um, we'll do our best to get it done. Thank you. Appreciate it. You enjoy your evening. All right, you too. I have a good one.